In this tutorial, you're going to learn exactly how to use Zoom from start to finish. And in the comment section, there are timestamps in case you need to skip to specific parts of this video. So let's dive right in. So of course, the first step is to head over to the Zoom website, zoom.us. So I'm going to click on plans and pricing. So Zoom offers four distinct price plans. Zoom free is the best option if you are just testing out Zoom or if you're hosting up to 100 participants. You also get unlimited one-to-one -one meetings and you can host the meeting for up to 40 minutes in length if you have two or more participants who are taking part in your meeting. If you want to host meetings that are longer than 40 minutes in length or have more than 100 participants, then you can look into the other price plans. What we're going to do now is to sign up for a free account. So I'm going to click on sign up, it's free on the top right hand corner. I have the option here to sign up with my email address or I can also sign in with my Google account or my Facebook account. So I'm going to sign in with my Google account just because it makes the process a lot easier and quicker. So here you want to choose the Gmail email address that you want to use. For me, I'm going to choose this one here. Then you need to click create account because we are creating a new Zoom account. When you first log into your Zoom account, this is the page that you will land on. You can see we are at the meetings tab and this is where you can schedule a new meeting by clicking here. Now I will show you how to do this in just a sec. You can also access previous meetings by clicking on this link here. Then there is the personal meeting room, which is a personal meeting room that is permanently reserved for you. Your personal meeting ID and personal link are the two ways that you can access this room. On the left hand side is where you can access your profile details. So you can change your profile picture here. You can also find your personal meeting ID here as well, your linked email address and more. If you want to make any modifications, you can do that by clicking on edit. In Zoom, you also have the possibility to link your account with Chrome or Microsoft Outlook. And in that way, you save time by scheduling your meetings directly from your calendar. So you can do that by clicking on download. All right, so once you've selected the Zoom plan that you like to use, the next step is to download Zoom onto your computer to start using it. And you will need to complete this step in order to host a meeting and also if you want to join a meeting. You do not have to have a Zoom account to attend a Zoom meeting or interview. However, you will be prompted to download the software onto your computer once you have clicked on the link that you have been provided to join a meeting. So be aware of that. So if you like the video so far, please click the thumbs up button down below, which will allow this video to be shared with more people and help out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. There are two ways that you can download Zoom onto your computer. One way is to scroll down and then under download, click on meeting client and download the software like that. Or if you click on host a meeting, and you select any of these options, you can also download Zoom onto your computer. So let's do that now. I'm going to click on with video on, and then you will see this pop-up window that says open Zoom meetings. So I'm going to click on this. You can also click on download and run. So this is the pop-up window that you will see when you download Zoom onto your computer. You will then be asked to join the conference by using your computer speakers or to test your microphone speaker. I'm going to click on join audio conference by computer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to pin Zoom to my taskbar just to make it more easily accessible. So this is the Zoom icon. Then I'm going to right click and then pin to taskbar. Then I'm going to minimize my Zoom app, but you can see this is where you can easily create a meeting, schedule a meeting, ask people to join a meeting. It's really easy to use. When you are hosting a meeting, this is the screen that your participants are going to see. You can also enter full screen mode by clicking up here and you can exit full screen mode here as well. Down here are your meeting controls and I will take you through each of them step by step so that you can make the most of your meeting or online conference. So at the far left here is where you can mute yourself or unmute yourself. Now, if you don't want your participants to hear you, then you can click on this icon and you will be muted. If you click again, 
you will unmute yourself. Then on the next control, you can also disable video. You can see now that only my profile picture is showing, and this is my profile picture from my Google account. If you want to change your profile picture, I've shown you where you can do that. If I click on this icon again, you can see I'm back on video mode. Hello. So on the next tab, you can invite other participants. As you can see right now, we have only one participant and that is myself, the host. So if I want to invite participants, I need to click on the link invite. Then you will see this pop-up window appear and you have several options. You can copy the URL of this meeting and you can send it to participants directly. So for example, you can send it to your students who are part of an email list. You can also do the same with copy invitation. So you can send that invitation to another participant as well. Whatever you do, don't forget to include the meeting password when sending out your URL so that your participants can access the meeting. You can also choose an email service that you can send your meeting invitation to. For example, if I click on Yahoo Mail, I can select which email address I want to send my invitation to. All right, I'm going to X out for now. So the next control is to manage your participants. So if you click on this option, you will see a white window appear usually on the right hand corner or at the center of your screen. So some of the features are that you can mute all participants. So for example, if you don't want participants speaking in your meeting, and also you don't want your participants to talk amongst each other, so you want them to focus on you, then you can click mute all. You can also unmute all, and I have more options here. So for example, mute participants on entry is really useful because it will mute your participants when they just enter your meeting so that they don't disturb other participants who are focusing on the host. If I click mute all, you can check the box allow participants to unmute themselves. Now this feature can be especially useful if you are hosting a meeting with younger students and you don't want to give them that power to unmute themselves. So you have the option to do it either for them or if you're hosting all the participants and you want them to do it themselves, then you can give them that permission. So I'm just going to X out here. And if I click on more again, we have some other features here. So for example, we can play an entry and exit chime. So this just means that there'll be some kind of sound playing in the background when someone enters and leaves the meeting. When you're hosting your meeting and you lock the meeting, it means that no new participants can join the meeting, even if they have the meeting ID and password. All right, so I'm going to X out from here. Another great feature in Zoom is the raise hand feature. You can raise your hand if you are a participant in a meeting. And to do that, click on participants and then click on the raise hand icon on the bottom right hand side of the participant window. When you click the raise hand icon, a hand icon will appear next to your name that will notify the host that your hand is raised. And if you want to lower your hand, you can click the hand icon again and your hand will be lowered. So it's kind of like raising up your hand if you have a question in class. Now keep in mind that a host can lower your hand for you as well as disable the raise hand feature altogether. All right, so I'm going to move on to screen share. And when you click on screen share, you can choose an individual application that is already open on your computer. You can see these are all of the different windows that are open on my computer right now. And if I want to share them, all I have to do is click and then click on share screen. Or you can choose to share your iPhone screen or iPad screen. Also, if you check the box share computer sound, any sound played by your computer will be shared in the meeting. You can check this box if you will be sharing a video clip in full screen mode. Now, another great feature that Zoom has, which really sets them apart from other video conferencing softwares is the whiteboard. So if I click on whiteboard and share screen, it is an amazing feature for teaching. So you can quickly scribble something here. You can also start drawing things. You can explain things on here. Also up here, you have the tools area where you can select text, for example. You've got the drawing tool, spotlight, eraser. So there are many tools here that you can use on your whiteboard. And if you want to stop sharing, all you have to do is click on stop share and you will stop sharing your screen. 
so you will just be back to hosting. And if I click on the arrow pointing upwards, you can see that multiple participants can share their screen simultaneously. So the next control is chat. If I click on that, the chat feature allows the host and participants to communicate with each other. If you want to chat, type your message in here and then click on enter to send. Participants can chat with each other or only with the host, which will depend on the settings that the host has selected. So you can see the settings here. Participants can chat with no one, only host, with everybody publicly or publicly and privately. You can also share a file with your participants, either from your computer or from your cloud accounts. And then we move on to record by clicking here and you can record everything that is happening in the meeting by clicking on record. You can also pause the recording by clicking on pause. And when you want to stop the recording, you can click on stop or click on end meeting. And that will automatically save the recording as an MP4 file. And finally, you can make meetings more fun by using reactions, for example, a thumbs up. And then if I click on end meeting, I can end meeting for all. And the reason why I have this option is because I'm the host. So I can choose to end the meeting for everybody or I can leave the meeting and have participants still talking between each other if I want to do that. And you can see that this is the MP4 file which has been generated after our meeting is finished. The final thing I want to cover very quickly is if you want to schedule a meeting, you can do that here on your Zoom account. So click on schedule meeting. Or if you go to the app, which is pinned down here on your taskbar, you can also schedule a meeting by clicking on the schedule icon, and then you can complete all of the meeting details here. So complete your meeting topic, a brief description of your meeting, when your meeting will take place. Also, if I scroll down, I'm just going to leave all this as they are. Now for meeting options, I'm going to enable join before host. A waiting room is just what it sounds like. So it's a virtual area that prevents people from joining the meeting until the host is ready. Then you want to save and you can see this is my meeting URL, which I can copy. All right. So this is my meeting invitation and this is what people are going to see when I send them the meeting invitation. So if somebody wants to join my meeting, they need to click on this URL and then they will be automatically prompted to download Zoom onto their computer so that they can join the meeting. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.